Welcome to Uncaged. Today we're speaking with Sean Stigler. Sean is the managing partner of the Colorado office and the chair of Venture Best for Michael Best. You know, he is very squarely focused on the venture world. He's a venture attorney. He's an angel investor. He's also been a founder. No surprise to any of you today, we're going to be talking about that lovely world, that entrepreneurial world that some of us are living every day. And Sean's going to share some guidance and wisdom with us on what's happening in that world. But Sean, before we get there, tell us a little bit about you and your career. Yeah, no, absolutely. And thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Looking forward to it. So yeah, I'm originally a Wisconsin guy. So was uh, uh, started off as an accountant and really fortunate to work in this bipolar type environment with Arthur Anderson, a huge, huge accounting firm from back in the day and worked with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of family offices. So, and yada, 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 had a great experience there and always wanted to live in Colorado. So moved out here in about 2000 and was fortunate enough, not too long after that, to start a firm called Modus Law, Uh, So did the founder thing, figured out who our telephone carrier was going to be, how we were going to do a 401k, you know, been through those (laughs) trenches and yeah, really grew that firm. So we, we split our practice there again in sort of that, that bipolar fashion between entrepreneurs, growth companies, venture back companies, and then a lot of family offices, VC funds, what, what cool kids call now capital allocators. So people Mm -hmm. putting money into that innovation economy. So Mm -hmm. it was great. You know, I was fortunate to be here when Techstars, Foundry, a lot of that ecosystem was really growing in Colorado and was able to to sort of be part of that ecosystem. And then grew the firm to about 16 folks. And as a lot of entrepreneurs go through this, this challenge, you know, you're not quite big enough to do all the things you want. Uh, you want to keep growing. You want to keep giving opportunities to your employees and your team yeah. and also your clients. And we we got approached by Michael Best, which I had known as a kid and just, just a great firm. We kind of call ourselves the Goldilocks firm, which yeah. we can talk more about later. But it was a great opportunity to both level up what we could do for our clients and the platform and the service, but then also, you know, do things like like we have a 16 week paid parental leave program, oh, you know, nice. something I could never do as a small entrepreneur. A lot of the folks have made partner that were on my team and just, just all the resources. So, so yeah, that's yeah. been a little bit my journey. I love that. I mean, it made me think, you know, in a previous entrepreneurial journey that I was on, I launched an advertising agency and mm-hmm. it was a services business. And Services businesses are wonderful in one respect, in the sense you don't need a ton of capital to get Uh them going, but man, are they hard to scale, (laughs) (laughs) you know, at least profitably, right? (laughs) And so, you know, when you were talking about that inflection point, the things you can do for your teams, I remember having a similar inflection point where we'd grown quite a bit, we were a nice little firm, but to like get to the next stage, our EBITDA was going to drop dramatically. We're going to have to reinvest. And it was like, and why are we doing this? Like, you know, like (laughs) it's a conundrum in a way. It really is. Right? It's an interesting moment. But, you know, back to the stuff you're working on, Sean. I mean, here you are now, Michael Best, working in Colorado. Tell me a little bit about what the team is working on right now. Yeah. No, absolutely. And it has, as you know, been a very interesting time in the venture market the last six months. So, yeah. I've been really excited. I mean, I think all of us on the team have really noticed things pick back up the last month or six weeks. So, you know, 2020, uh, 2021, 2022, where anyone who follows venture off the charts, capital deployment, investment, growth, valuations, and then things crash back to earth the second half of 2022. And it's been, you know, a little bit of a choppy market for innovators since then. And so, I'm so excited. We're really seeing the the especially the early stage market really pick back up. A lot of deals, a lot of money getting put in play. I think unless there's something else terrible that happens in the world, I think Q1 is going to be a really good time for innovators. And um, so so that's been great. And then our team, uh, both in Colorado and, and nationally, you know, we added a great 
partner of mine, Aaron Barker, former Wilson Cincini attorney down in, in Austin, really growing our mm-hmm. team there. Great team in Chicago, added a great team in North Carolina. So our, our thesis is really historically we're famous for doing a lot in the tech transfer office world. So innovation coming out of universities. And we've really grown that lucky enough to work with, you know, a number of, of universities around the country. So continuing to grow that team is a big focus of ours so that we can mm-hmm. be boots on the ground in these innovative markets. And then, yeah, the other big focus is uh, really our family office and our investment funds helping them. So we also have a consulting side of the firm. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like the Accenture side of of a firm. And that side is really helping a lot of these capital allocators find opportunities, helping them with their port codes, helping them with leadership and guidance. So my, my partner, Benny Fowler, runs that team. And that's been just really fantastic to see kind of bringing together the innovators and the capital allocators and making sure mm-hmm. we could be supportive of that ecosystem, not just, you know, service providers. Yeah. And I mean, when you look out into the world, one of the things that as an entrepreneur that heart I find very heartening is you say last six weeks, things are getting better. <laughs> you know, before the last six weeks, it was a bit of a wasteland, I think, for a while there. <laughs> People were really stressed out on that. And, and I worry about that, not only because I am an entrepreneur, but also Absolutely. because I'm such a big believer in the space that you work in, Sean. Yeah. I really do think that it is the driver of our economy and our for world. Sure. And so yeah. with that idea in mind, what are some of the things that you're seeing are getting a lot of focus right now in the yeah. venture space? Yeah. Well, and and one thing, just stepping back to your point before we go there is, you know, like so many things in market economies, the best opportunities are often when it's the most scary, right? And yeah. so <laughs> if you go back and I've, I've posted, you know, your team's amazing on LinkedIn, but if you look back at the cycles, so kind of the post-01 tech bubble crash, mm-hmm. all the companies that came out right after that, it was one of the most prolific periods and most successful times for venture capital investment in history was that 0203 iteration. Similarly, 2009, 2010, Uber, Square, Airbnb, like so many innovative companies came out of those post downturn cycles. And when you think about it, it makes sense because unfortunately the big tech companies we, you know, we see it again today. Spotify just laid off folks. They lay off folks. Twitter laid off folks. Google laid yeah. off folks. And so all these folks who had very stable jobs, but who were very creative, very innovative, unfortunately, when they lose those jobs, then all of a sudden they look and they say, I've always wanted to start this company. I've always had this idea. Right. And so right. it can just be a, an awesome time for innovation and you can get that talent working on innovation. So, and then to your point, yeah, seeing a lot of different things in the market. I mean, obviously what's what's catching everyone's attention is artificial intelligence, large right. language learning, um, similar to, and there's amazing work going on there, but similar to when we had the crypto bubble that burst, you know, you're seeing a lot of bolt on AI to non sequitur right. companies. And I think companies are, or investors are, are, getting wise to that. So I I don't think it's smart to just add artificial intelligence to your snack bar company, you know, like we don't <laughs> we don't need that. But but real AI, real automation is getting a lot of traction. I think as, you know, we're having this employment, there's I still think 10,000 unfilled jobs in the economy. So yeah. investors are looking at well what are ways if we can't get people to fill those jobs? How can we serve those, you know, so and and how can we help help improve the process for companies, help improve entrepreneurs? Another great company we work with, Tilt, uh, is a, a leave management platform started by two great women in, in Fort Collins. And it really helps these companies that are growing and scaling like yours. Yeah. Um, you know, you have employees in California and Florida and Texas. Well, how, how do the leave laws work? What happens mm. if, you know they want to take leave. Well, that's a lot for an entrepreneur to handle. So companies that can say, hey, we're a solution for that. It's a SaaS platform. I we'll love make that. sure you're covered, right? Yeah, yeah, I love that. Well, I mean, it just reminds me of a TED talk that I went to years ago where there was a, it's a relatively famous designer and he had, he had decided that every five years he would take a year off. 
you know, in his person. life, right? <laughs> yeah. And his argument was basically like, it's not human to just constantly do the same thing for 30 years. Like, uh -huh. if you take a break, you know, it allows you to refresh, recharge, think about things again, and move forward. And yeah. I was having the same conversation here in New York last night, I was out with a group of medical professionals, you know, oh. the work at places like Bellevue and NYU and sure. And they were talking about leave and yep. uh, because doctors are burnt out, you know, they 100%. are right. And some of these people are really profound scholars, like they're working yep. on amazing things. And I said, well, has anyone considered like leave? Like if you take a year <laughs> out and, and the the top guy was like, not possible. <laughs> like, not, not we're not going to allow it. But it was like, it's exactly what needs to happen. We 100%. need a system. So I love that. I love yeah. that idea. Yeah. It's a great one for sure. No, it's, it's awesome. And you, you touched on another hot vertical is med tech, medical innovation, yeah. alternative medical delivery systems. That's been really, really hot. And we just had another great company. It's called Keel, like Keel on a Boat but successful entrepreneur, multiple time founder, but it's a, it's a mental health care platform to support healthcare workers. Oh, um, so exactly what you're talking about, because it's such a need. And so, you know, those are the types of companies that are getting funded, getting funded quickly, getting funded by, by good, good, good funds, because we are waking up to some of these pain points in the economy. And, and yeah. uh, it's, it's great to see. It's great to see. Well, listen, Sean, I mean, you've done a lot of amazing work in the broader venture space and certainly dedicated your career to this. Tell me what drives that. What drives yeah. your passion for this space? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I as I talk to our more junior folks, I just think it's the greatest job in the world. So uh, <laughs> because, I mean, on any given day, if I looked over here at my calendar, you know, you talk to... I talked to a couples therapy company platform mm -hmm. an hour ago. You talk to a consumer products company that's trying to, um, you know, have more quality ingredients for young kids. The, mm -hmm. the, the diversity of innovation I get to interact with every day is unbelievable. Like no one should get to have this much fun and, right. and you just get to see what's next in the economy. And so we're just a small part of the story of these companies, but being able to, to really you know, a lot of our founders we work with when it's two kids in a garage, you know, they mm -hmm. have no money. They're at the very beginning stages and then see them grow to hundreds of employees, massive impact in society, whether it's clean tech or, you know, a SaaS platform or CPG or whatever. It's it's just so cool. So that part, I mean, there's just, it's amazing. Yeah. And then as I get older in my career and, and get to be fortunate to be in a leadership role, just being able to be a little part of the the up and coming folks, you know, and right. seeing them grow and and find their passions and what gets them out of bed. And that part's amazing. And then I think the third thing is working with a lot of capital allocators, helping them find those opportunities, uh, seeing the, the passion they have for making a difference in the world. And then just seeing, I mean, you know, sometimes it's tens, hundreds of millions of dollars that are going into clean tech or women's health issues or things like mm -hmm. that. And it's like, this is moving the needle in our country. Like this is making a difference. And so yeah. it's, again, I'm just a tiny part of it. We're just a tiny part of it, but, but to be along for the ride, it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, no. And I mean, for me, it's really kind of making sure that that whole broader ecosystem holds together. I mean, uh -huh. I get it why we have these massive corporations, but just breathing life into these concepts and making sure that we move them forward in an accelerated path is absolutely yep. key. So it's a great story, Sean. But I mean, it's an interesting time still. I mean, we still have sure. this economic cycle that we're in where interest rates are mm -hmm. really, really high. I mean, it, to be honest with you, it's kind of like I should have listened to my parents, you know, when <laughs> my dad would tell me stories about the 1970s uh -huh. and you're like, well, you know, you have no idea how good you have it, you know, <laughs> and, you know, we, we used to have a 12 and a half percent mortgage and all of these types of things, but interest rates still are high. The yep. economy is filled with lots of question marks. Uh -huh. Everything is really unpredictable, but 
there's a lot of good things for 2024, right? We see yeah. that it's going to be an Olympic year. It's an election year. Yeah. The U.S. economy still seems to be charging yeah. forward. You know, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, it's funny. My parents' first mortgage was 14%. Yeah, um, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, and I think, you know, as hard as it is to say to all of our founder friends, I think the zero interest market for so long in some ways did not serve us well because mm. it allowed just a little bit of, um, you know, lack of focus sometimes or the fact that money costs money now even though I wish it cost about half as much as it did, I think that'd be the sweet spot, but it's making people recalibrate and think. And hopefully, you know, the, the Fed has certainly signaled they're trying to hedge, but they've, they've certainly stopped and we might even get a rate cut mid yeah. next year. And I think already, just as soon as the Fed signaled they were done raising, we saw a lot of capital move into the market. Because one of the great yeah. things, we have all these variables in the economy, but one of the things that is true is there was more capital raised by VC and PE funds in 2022 than, than ever in history, right? When you kind of look at the totality. And so there is a lot of dry powder ready for deals. And, and valuations good. are coming down. Yeah. And I think, yeah. again, if we get maybe some good tax I, policy. You know, it sounds funny, but yeah. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, even for, and this is a tough thing to say as an entrepreneur, <laughs> but like, I, you know, sometimes I'll sit with these kids that have just wonderful concepts and they'll be coming out of various incubators and they're yep. very, very proud of these valuations that they get. Yeah. And I sit there and I look at their commercial model and I look at their kind of immediate trajectory. Yeah. And I, I mean, I say a lot of times I kind of warn them. I say, you guys may have raised at a too high of a valuation. Like yep. you are sitting in doomsday seat right now. And they're always surprised at why I say that. And I said, like, uh -huh. you, you know, it's you'll raise on that. But in a year's time, when you sit down with your venture buddies, it's not going to be the same conversation, my no. friend. <laughs> no, and it's and it's not right now. You yeah. Know? And and again, we want the we take the long view and you want the best possible outcome and the best chance of growth and impact for the company. And I couldn't agree more. I mean, some of these artificial valuations yeah. actually cut that. And, and, you know, one of the things that's it's in the news a lot, I'm not a genius, but all these high valuations with unique preferences and things like that are completely crippling companies' ability to raise. And so we're seeing a lot of what I would kind of call non sequitur, non sequential safes and other bridge rounds for companies that have raised 30, 40 million bucks, yeah. but they can't raise, now they need another 10, 20, but the valuation's in half. And if they took that much money at that valuation, it would wipe out the founders. It would exactly. wipe a lot of people out. So it is, it is tough. And I, again, wish all the founders well, and that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. But I, I, I think recalibrating a little bit now is, in the long useful. run, will let. I, I hope that that message gets out there because yeah. it's a complicated message and it's it a hard one to have with entrepreneurs. I mean, yeah. I definitely sometimes are at these kind of mentorship meetings, and I can see why they're proud of what they've achieved. But at the same time, I'm like, look, I, look, look, let me walk you through the next three years. Like, this is what, uh -huh. how it's going to go for you, yep. and be careful here. Like, yep. be thoughtful. Like. You know, and it's a tricky one, right? It is. And in those of us who went through the 2001 bubble, um, even, I mean, a lot of those were public companies. You know, what we always stress to our clients is if, if the financial exit is your motivator, until the money hits your pocket, nothing mm. else really matters, right? right. So if, if you get a really high valuation as an early stage and then you run out of money, well, that didn't do you any good. You yeah. know, even if you get a high valuation later, and it fails, or you don't get to optimize, or you know you don't get the liquidity event. It also didn't do you any good, you know. I mean, secondaries are getting more popular, which is good. You can take some money off the table, but until that money hits your pocket, it's all academic. 
So (laughs) (laughs) well, there you go. You heard it here. Sean, thank you so much for being on Uncaged today. If someone wanted to learn more about what you and the Michael Best team are working on, uh, where's the best place to find you guys? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, certainly with your great help, LinkedIn is is a great place. And we're we're very active there, both myself personally and the firm, Michael Best, and then MichaelBest.com and Twitter as well. So yeah, very much appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Well, Sean, thanks so much for being on the show. We've been really talking about the venture landscape, where we are. Sean Stigler is the managing partner of Michael Best in their Colorado office. I really am jealous about being there. I, you know, over Thanksgiving, I I was up in Vermont and they were just getting snow and I'd missed the ski opportunity by a week, you know, <laughs> by a week. So I, I'm always jealous when I talk to people in Colorado that you guys have such a beautiful place to be. Uh, Sean, thanks so much for being on the show and we look forward to having you back. All right. Thanks so much, man. Cheers.